India Charts publishes Nifty Daily, daily video updates, the weekly Elliott Wave Outlook and the Long Shot Report covering all asset classes. Hi everyone, this is the 9th of October 2020. We've ended a second week up and it's been a big week, bigger than what you would think was the decline. So in two weeks, we've actually taken out the high from where we fell for almost four weeks. And throughout that fall, everybody's questioned this decline, uh, thought of the big crash coming back. I've reiterated that that's not going to be the scenario simply because I think that we are forming an impulsive advance in which we are in wave five. So that's been the case that I've been writing about and we're moving in a well, uh, nicely uh, channeled move. So this move is essentially uh, moving inside a channel. Uh, you can even draw a reverse channel if you want to further adjust the move. On weekly charts, you're actually not seeing any violations of these trend lines. But on the daily chart, you might find that the uh, lower end breaks temporarily in wave four, which sometimes can mean that the fifth wave also you will see a break on the upside. Now the upper upper end of the channel is anywhere from 12,500 to 12, you know to almost 12, uh, 13,000 depending on where uh, and how much time it actually takes to get up there. Uh, but I mentioned in my CNBC interview today, which you'll probably see the replay of later on, that uh, time-wise, when you're also projecting price, price is uh, one part of the scene. Time is that, uh, uh, and time is always an estimate. Note, I always say that time is not a sign, so don't really ask me how long something will take. But still, I've, uh, you know, managed to make a mention that probably this happens by uh, Diwali and that's simply based on the time that it took in wave one. So wave one was six weeks long. And if we add up six weeks, we've actually completed two weeks of an advance. And if it takes another four, we'll end up somewhere in the first week of November. And you'll be very, very close to not only Diwali, but also you'll be very, very close to the uh, US elections, which some people would have said is the time where the market will pick up again or it will top out again or something will happen, you know. So, but US markets uh, have had a mood of their own. Historically, uh, whenever you've had elections, that is if you can go to the last two, which is what everybody keeps looking back at. So, if you actually look at 2016 when Trump was elected, this was uh, September, October, November, the entire period. Markets were actually flat to down. Uh, this last sell-off actually occurred right around when he got elected because a lot of people spread fear that you know, if he gets elected, God knows what he'll do, even though he was talking of tax cuts and reforms. And apart from that one day um, uh, market reaction, after that it rallied for the rest of the year. So, the, uh, But the more important point is how does it behave before because we are in the time period before the election and at least uh, in his last election, uh, it actually was flat to down. Now, same thing happened in say 2008 uh, when, uh, when uh, you know, uh, Barack Obama was going out uh, and uh, we had a change uh, in, uh, I mean coming in, sorry, and you had a change in election uh, 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 happening. So it followed a bear market, so you had a bearish period. But when you go into interim period, so this is 2008, you go to say 2013, okay, so that's four years uh, later, 2012 would be more exact. So 2012, October. So what did it really, what did we really see? We actually saw the market peak out here again and, uh, you know, fall a bit in, in November into the election period. So this is what has happened twice at least, which is probably why a lot of people take note of uh, this particular decline that, you know, you actually seen it decline in a couple of elections. But there have been periods where you can probably go back and find that the market actually advanced uh, during uh, this period. And the reasons may have been very, very different. Like it happened here just before the elections, the rally started, I think in 2004. And uh, uh, why can't that be the scenario? You know, but this of course started late part of October. In the current case, therefore, uh, I highlighted in a note, and there was a lot of uh, you know people writing back and forth on that that no market's going to crash. And what I was saying is that since you had an ABC correction in the Dow, uh, which is what you did over here. Uh, you could probably break out and end up getting an election rally. And also it's been a time when most parties have actually agreed that they want to give a stimulus, which is why the markets uh, are not really thinking who's coming to power. They're just thinking that whoever's going to come to power, you're going to get a stimulus package. And uh, uh, hopefully it would have happened before the election. We don't know uh, which of the two is going to be the case. Uh, but it's at least triggered a rally. And in September, when this correction was going on, I started. I, had, I was highlighting in the early stages that 
I'm seeing rotation out of uh, the Dow Jones Industrials Index into uh, other indices like the Utilities Index. And uh, we've actually seen even the transports. In fact, we've seen all of these alternate indices uh, do some degree of runaway. So here I'm looking at the Utilities Index. It had a long uh, corrective consolidation phase, but last couple of weeks from late September, it's actually uh, managed to run up. The same thing we actually see in, uh, say, even uh, the Dow Jones uh, Transports Index. Okay, so it's actually gone past the highs that it made uh, last month and it's probably very, very close to and or probably has surpassed its January high as well. So this is what has been, uh, this, is, this is what has been happening. Now, of course, it's has it even gone because this was a higher high. Actually, uh, the transports index peaked in 2018 and didn't surpass that. And it has actually surpassed that as well in the recent move up. So this is what's, what's happening. There's strength in the broad market and which is why it's surprising that, you know, usually Indian markets in terms of asset allocation tend to follow uh, the US uh, indices. And for some reason, for some reason, we've actually not seen that happen in the uh, small stocks. Okay, so the US Russell 2000, which actually peaked in 2018, made a lower high in 2020, sold off uh, very sharply. Uh, of course, it's not gone back above the January highs. But when you look at it, uh, what you actually see is a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 impulsive rally from the low that it made in September. So very clearly starting a fresh wave. Now mark the previous move as a larger wave 1 and 2 simply because the entire rise from the March low counts as five waves in this index and many of the US indices. Uh, and so I'm trying to mark it as one, two, three starting. It may differ in the uh, Dow Jones industry uh, or the S&P itself. DJI also, you can mark it this way. And so you're seeing this, if you're seeing it impulsive, it means this is a fresh rally. So why aren't you seeing mid and small cap stocks really participate uh, in India itself? So that's a, that's a question. And I think uh, my sense is that you cannot really uh, continue the way you're continuing right now. That is, uh, you know, only being driven by banking, which was, uh, uh, to say the least, the crybaby of the uh, recent market, because uh, for that one index, we were blaming the Nifty for not really performing. And now you have banking and IT really becoming the performers of the market and nothing else is moving. So that's uh, the surprise. So when we look at the mid cap uh, Nifty 100 uh, index, what we actually see is very similar to the Nifty, it did wave 1, 2, 3, 4 very nicely. In the small cap, you may even mark the third at this top because this is a higher high. Uh, but in the mid cap, this this is fine to mark it uh, like this. And what we actually uh, what we actually end up noting is that uh, we've made the first wave up, minor wave 1, minor wave 2. But we really just didn't rally in minor wave 3, which is what the Nifty has been doing. My sense is when Nifty completes its third wave, probably the mid caps do join in because like I said, we have really rarely seen deviations between uh, the two segments, especially if it's uh, driven by a global uh, move. So it's surprising. I mean, for example, even global banks rallied, the US Dow Jones Bank Index rallied last week and uh, so as the Nifty Bank, uh, you know, Bank Nifty. So the same should happen here. If you have mid and small cap stocks rallying in the US, I think you should see it happen here in terms of just asset movement. Uh, but it's probably a lead lag effect. So as long as Nifty is going on right now in a momentum and it's third wave driven by certain stocks and sectors, money is just chasing that. But moment that chase stops and I think you see a loss of momentum in uh, either the tech sector or in banking uh, and or in the Nifty itself, which has moved, you know, 100, 100 points a day. If it starts slowing down, starts going 50 or 20, 30 points a day uh, as it gets closer and closer to the uh, upside potential uh, for the fifth wave, I think. Uh, asset allocation will shift uh, towards the broad market. You will get that uh, breakout rally in uh, mid caps into a third wave. And uh, then you will be surprised that, well, Nifty is barely moving and you have mid caps moving 2% a day. So the complete opposite of what you're seeing right now could actually end up happening when a minor wave 3 up for the mid caps develop because this too has not completed wave 5. So just like Nifty had not completed wave 5 and, and is now at a new high, uh, similarly, uh, the mid cap indices also have to do something like that. Huh? In the meantime, I ended up publishing this chart both on both on social media and on uh, the website itself, showing that I could count a very, very clear and this is different from the CRB index that I keep posting, where also I can do wave 1 and 2, uh, though initially I took it as 1, 2, 1, 2. Uh, but the Bloomberg index counts on the weekly very nicely as a 5 wave advance. Uh, and uh, since we paused for a pretty steep pullback, uh, of course, it's not like a 50% retracement in wave 2. So most of these corrections have actually just gone back to the 20-week average and taken off. 
and you can redraw a channel which is what I've done and if the third wave is actually as big as the first which ended up being a 26% move then we are looking at another third the third wave itself being you know another 26% move from here we've already done the initial swing so we've gone past this high which would be ABC so the wave B high that further confirms that this fall is only ABC which means it is three waves and corrective in nature and uh, uh, we're on to another impulsive advance from here that could last uh, you know several weeks or months to come so interesting setup uh, that i think uh, is showing up here and i've been watching this move all week long watching the commodity index pick up surprisingly i think people are probably not still you know metal metal stocks for example were actually weak throughout uh, this week despite the advance that we are seeing very very quietly here probably because people have not taken note of what is happening or they still had doubts about the central factor which everybody's come to note and that is the dollar right so just opening the dollar chart i think that's the last part of uh, uh, the uh, puzzle that people really want to solve so uh, giving me give me a moment and what we end up looking at is now this is of course a series of charts of the uh, dollar pairs themselves uh, so you can see today most of them are dipping down but the most important one uh, to us are, are just two the first is uh, the emerging markets currency index this one's important because uh, here too after thinking that you know this minor wave 1 of 5 2 initially i just took it as 1 and 2 just like i'm doing on many things one at a time uh, but it didn't break the daily averages it took support here and again started to bounce off we can say that this is an initial 1 2 3 4 5 so probably uh, it has started the next move up already the second thing which i watch for and because the euro has a more than a 50 percent weight in uh, the uh, dollar index we look at the euro uh, for a sign that you know next move up has started now today again the euro is strong and in fact in terms of this decline it's completed a nice downward channel a b c broken out of this channel if you just stretch it and so i would believe that this marks the start of a new move higher uh, euro is concerned so this is a new move probably a fifth wave i'm still not counting this as you know one and two complete as i'm doing in many cases like the commodity index i feel that the dollar index or the euro still have wave five incomplete for the move that started at the march bottom either i take this as a triangular structure uh, or i take it as one two this is one two three four and i have a fifth left that's the uh, basic thought i'm going with and if that's not the case even if i do what i just did on the uh, msci currency pair take this as a larger wave one and two then it's an even bigger move that we are starting you know in terms of a third wave because if i simply go to the weekly chart now the euro has been pretty far away from uh, the 20 uh, average now this is the 40 so i'll move to the 20 so we'll see there pretty close not very very far and if i do the same thing with the dxy or the dollar index we get a very very similar result it bounced back in three waves abc almost touching the 20 week and selling off which is what we are seeing at in every almost everything it's happened in the s p it's happened in the commodity index it's happening in the currency index and all of them are not doing deep wave two retracements they're just pulling back in a smaller abc 23 percent retracement and running away which is really a sign of uh you know a strong trend that this this does not happen in a weak trend it only happens in a strong trend which is why you need to really pay attention i come to the daily uh the daily chart is the final one to really watch uh, for the dollar uh, because after doing abc down it has to move down impulsively so i would mark this as minor one two three the last and final confirmation of course is when you actually break down and not just the trend line uh the trend line is the first thing uh, the trend channel the second is uh, breaking this low itself because if i mark this as abc the B low has to break to confirm that yes, there's no way of doing one, two, one, two, and still going on. So for the last last bears uh, bulls, I think of the dollar left who are still saying, "No, oh, this is going to go up to 100 again." Uh, we need to break this low, you know. So then, so then they can be taken to the cleaners there. This low is really 92.75. Okay, so a break below 92.75 on the dollar index part should do the job. Of really confirming that this was a three wave rise though i do think because when i look at it this looks like a triangular structure typical abc the only other odds you can say you no know, this will be abc x and then do another abc but that's something we can never know in advance and so i always go with the best case scenario that is consider uh, based on the strength of the trend 
that it's uh, the start of something else down. Uh, if you have to make a choice, you have to make those choices because uh, if you make the wrong choice, you could end up, you know, simply being biased on one side and then it doesn't play out. In this, in this case, holding weekly averages, not breaking that momentum uh, and the monthly momentum remaining in sell mode, I would say, uh, moment you complete ABC, always be prepared for the downward trend to resume because the larger case is that we are in a bear market for the dollar. I think that's something people are somewhat coming into tune with, but not yet completely. Uh, this bounce back, a lot of people gave up thinking that, you know, the dollar bounce is the start of an uptrend. Uh, or else they also thought maybe that will be a larger retracement, so markets are going to crash. Uh, uh, it's amazing people have not come out of the crash mindset after having watched the March crash, when actually speaking, uh, the stock market crash is almost two years old. And to, uh, to understand that, how is it two years old, you simply have to go and look at something like the mid-cap index. We also saw it in the US Russell 2000, that is individual stocks. You know, if you just look at individual stocks, the top occurred here uh, in 2018. And from there, you had you've been seeing this decline. You know, even though the mid-cap index is down more than 50%, individual stocks are down almost 80%. This is, a, this is an almost two and a half year bear market that you're looking at from top to bottom. And uh, uh, that was the bear market. And that bear market's last leg, which is this, the sharpest fall came because of the COVID-19 effect. And that has brought people into becoming consensus, whereas all the people who didn't believe my bear case from here to here for two years are all now questioning the bull case because the crash happened and now they are convinced that COVID is the reason the economy will not pick up, which is completely, uh, you know, wrong thinking because uh, the economy did not get into trouble because of COVID. It was already in trouble economic growth around the world was already at 0% GDP growth by December of 2019. Uh, so that was already done. Uh, this only aggravated the final sell-off that made the market extremely oversold from where we are now rising impulsively is what I think. Uh, and that's what we've confirmed this week with the new high in the Nifty itself, which is the main index that we are really tracking. And that's now subdividing into minor wave one, minor two, minor three until we really complete a five wave advance uh, or till we get close to the top end of the channel, I think we've still got room to go. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, estimate is that uh, this goes on to some time uh, closer to the US election or to uh, Dipavali. So the next four weeks should become extremely interesting in terms of market action, completely the opposite of what most people are expecting and even opposite to what you're seeing in the last week. A lot of things will change in terms of sector behavior and mid cap behavior and we're going to be tracking that very very closely uh, if you're uh, you know willing to do that then uh, do it along with us just download the india charts app either on uh, the i, I store or uh, play store uh, ios or uh, android whatever device you're using and you can you know stay up to date on my daily posts on all of these trends that are playing out thank you